Live from the Sands Convention Center, Las Vegas, Nevada. Extracting the signal from the noise. It's the Cube covering HP Discover 2015. Brought to you by HP. And now your hosts, Dave Vellante and Jeff Frick. Welcome back to HP Discover, everybody. Dave Vellante and Jeff Frick. This is the Cube. This is day three of HP Discover. Check out hpdiscover.social. It's our new social experience, social digital experience that we're overlaying on the Cube at HP Discover. Milan Shetty is here as the CTO of HP Storage. Cube along, Milan. Good to see you again. Oh, great to be here. It's very exciting. So I got to say, congratulations on uh, what's happening in HP Storage. Uh, really impressive what you guys have done. Thank you. You got to Th be pleased. Thank you. I'm very much pleased. Very much pleased and. Uh, more, more happy than I can be, and uh, thanks for the compliments. Coming from you, Dave, as a well, storage industry veteran and industry veteran, feels good. So here's the thing, I mean, <laughs> you know, I, I, I like to, to compliment folks, but at the same time, I like to tell our audience sort of what I think. So when you guys said, we're not going to buy an all-flash array company, we're not going to do what EMC did, we're not going to do what IBM did, et cetera, we're going to build on 3PAR. I admit, I said at the time, well, HP's got no choice. Meg said, we can't you know, make acquisitions, we got to pay down our debt, so they got no choice, but it's kind of a bolt-on. You guys, well, 3PAR used to talk about bolting on thin provisioning, and you know what, they were right. And so the whole industry was really skeptical, myself included, that you could pull this off, but not only did you pull it off, uh, it looks to be, if not the best, one of the best all-flash arrays out there. I'm sure you think it's the best. So, what did you have to do, CTO of that group? Take us back to the decision point of when you said, okay, we've got to do this, Wh why three par, how three par? Yeah, so, so, um, so you know, as, as you said, I've been here before uh, at the Cube, and I've been at HP now five years, and uh, uh, I, I joined HP about uh, 10 months uh, prior to the what became the three par acquisition, and, um, and, uh, and there, there were lots of reasons why we, um, acquired 3PAR, and one of the things which we did was uh, we looked at the 3PAR core operating system and everything. In fact, when we acquired 3PAR, 3PAR didn't have a very good flash story. Uh, they had a very solid modern operating system. They had a very solid architecture on the software side and also their ASIC side and everything, and they had done a very nice job of what I would call separation of concerns in the architecture so that they could uh, handle newer media, newer protocols, uh, then now we added file also on 3PAR. They had done this nice, very nice separation of concern in their core software architecture, and we liked that. We liked that, and when, uh, when, the, uh, when, the, when the now famous bidding war was going on between HP and Dell, we were, willing, we were not going to lose that bidding war, <laughs> not because what they had, where they were shipping with their hybrid arrays or anything, but we knew where the market was going to go. The market was going to go with Flash, where the market, the market was going to go with unified protocols and everything, and that, the operating system, the three-part operating system, we were willing to bet on, which is why we paid what we did, and in fact, you know, the, the, we, we, were, we were willing to pay even more uh, <laughs> if, if the bidding war continued, because we liked that operating system. Separation of concerns were fantastic um, in that architecture, and, um, and having done storage, and also the servers, and also operating system uh, a while, we just loved it from a technology standpoint and everything. So in the last five years, um, the, the, uh, right after we got acquired, right after we acquired 3PAR in, in, um, uh, in uh, 2010, uh, we started working on making it uh, flash capable. Nobody gave us, gave us a chance, and it was kind of the love to play that underdog play, yeah. but we knew what cards we had, right? We had the secret play on, uh, here's how we're going to change the operating environment, here's how we're going to do it, and we released it's, um, it's the core three-par architecture. Why it's good for Flash, it's not only good for Flash today with the dollars per gigabyte play which we're running, but as the newer technologies of Flash and non-volatile memory are co technologies are coming, three-par is ready for it right now. So the amazing thing about that is that when you think about the three-par architecture and the chunklets and the spreading, yeah. it's optimized for spinning disk, it's solving spinning disk problems, but, but what was it about the architecture that led you to believe that it was so appropriate for Flash? I wonder if you could add some color to that. Yeah, sure. So the 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 uh, the, the, the three part core architectures around the chunklets uh, and everything was not only good for the um, the disks, but Flash and also NVM. And I think the uh, the layer, the way the operating system was structured, was uh, was a very strong storage operating system. Uh, the, the I'll give three 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 big architectural components to it. When they designed 
they didn't just take any stack. They were uh, optimization and efficiency was built into the operating system. Every single I/O, they did a lot of performance analysis and everything to make sure that there was no overhead on any any elements of the stack. It was a very thin operating system stack and everything. I/O has to come in and go out very fast. Uh, it has to be reliable. So th those principles were uh, were built in pretty uh, pretty uh, pretty nicely. Uh, the second is that um, the uh, in the flash world, it's a latency game. Uh, how do you get, it's like the packet delivery. You got to get from point A to point B as quickly as possible with the less route um, uh, route in the way. And the way they designed that platform was, uh, on platform is, is that uh, they had algorithms built in, in their operating system to go from point A to point B, which in today's world would be called machine learning and like the big data and everything. That was all in the operating system. There was it was all about getting to point A to point B as quickly as possible, as reliably as possible. Was inherent in their core architecture. So all of the concepts around the machine learning and everything, which the big data guys talk about, so a lot of it's anticipatory in the OS. intelligence. It in was there, all yeah. in there. It was yeah. all in there. Mm -hmm. uh, it was all in there, which is why we liked it from a media standpoint mm -hmm. and uh, and and flash and VM and everything. This is the this is the storage operating system of future. Mm. That's why we're willing. Okay, to Okay, so it was, it was the thin OS. It was the latency algorithms latency. and then that that other sort of big data. That's right. And we didn't know it was big data. <laughs> exactly. And now HP so acquires 3PAR. Now I used to talk to David Scott about this all the time. 3PAR was barely a profitable company. It That's right. Lose a little bit of money, make a little money. It had to pour money into expanding its distribution channels to compete with guys like EMC. So it could never make any money. Now and so as a result, it had to manage R and D very tightly. So it comes into HP. So you now inject sort of HP's yep. resources in here. So what did HP? Classic bring to the table, and what was the three-part piece? Was that a collaboration, or was it more? Hey, three-part guys, go off and do this. No, I think I think this is the um, uh, uh, HP brought the channel, uh, the the sales channel, mm -hmm. the engineering expertise, and everything. People who knew operating system, right? So I'll I'll, I'll give an example. So uh, so as, so I've been here uh, at HP five years, and I can tell you about the customers. Mm -hmm. uh, when I talk to customers, right? My year number one was, uh, if I had to describe in one word, was uh, my customer interaction was despair. Mm. Customers were do something in storage. Help. You used to be yeah, <laughs> help. You were great. We still have EVAs. EVAs were great. They were the number one mid-range array until in the in the 90s until EMC unseated them. Mm. Get back on the horse. Mm. Yeah, you know, go on the race. So the year number one I would describe at Discover was year of despair. Mm. Um, and uh, and they were like, we want you guys to win. We're buying servers from you. You're number one in servers, but you know what you attach on the storage side is like bad. So you, uh, so that was my year of despair. Year number two was a year of hope. Where, and I call it year of hope because um, uh, HP had acquired 3PAR and uh, everyone in the technology community uh, thought that that was the coolest operating system standpoint. And you know what HP did in, during that time was, HP's got an operating system DNA. When we uh, increased the um, 3PAR R&D staffing, uh, we didn't have to train a lot of people how an operating system works or how, or they could just learn this three-part operating system and say that this is a kick-ass operating system. Mm. Uh, we could just hire people quickly because they already existed at HP. So from an R&D standpoint, we had a big leg up. We just increased the R&D from three-part uh, just dramatically in the first two, three, four years. People, because mostly, people yeah. just mostly people, mostly people. And the second element of that was the, um, the, uh, we invested a lot in the equipment for testing, interop, because mm -hmm. storage business is all about interop and everything. Mm -hmm. we, put in, we, put in lot, we put in a lot of money around the interop, which 3 part as a startup could not afford. Yeah. Uh, uh, right, so, so we added more people in, we added the R&D, and most, more important, mo the most important aspect of all of this was customers. Customers wanted HP to win. Customers wanted HP storage to win. Customers wanted they wanted uh, HP to regain the lead. The channel wanted regain to win, and that's like a perfect storm. Okay, Good technology so had, people. So you had despair, hope. What was year three? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so year three was optimism because you know what was happening was um, uh, we introduced the mid range. So all of the tier one features of 3PAR at the mid range cost point, yeah, right. and that was the year of optimism. Is because you know there were customers who would walk in and go. Um, don't screw up this acquisition. Good technology, because because you know we have some little bit of a checkered relationship with acquisition. Seventy-five years, some were good and some were not so good. So um, so the hope was turning into optimism. But there was a between year two and year three, there was this period where like just don't screw this acquisition up, mm -hmm. right? We'll be, we'll, we're interested to buy it. So year number three was the year of uh, optimism. We bought the high-end features uh, to the mid-range. So they were like, oh yeah, yeah, you're doing something good here. I'm optimistic. 
about HP's future. So that's kind of uh, that was kind of a big, uh, big trend which was going. Then the year number four was excitement because we moved from optimism that we brought this um, uh, the cost vector to the three par, but we introduced flash. And in the year number four, the excitement was that we made two successful transitions. Um, one was the cost vector of high-end features to the low end, and then we did the disk to flash, an all-flash array. That was exciting. Year number four was year of excitement. Last year, I remember being here all-flash array three part, and they were like, oh, we didn't knew, we didn't think you would, we were last year, in year number three, we were worried that you'll screw up the acquisition. In year number four, we were worried that you're not going to get the all-flash array, but you were, you were there, so that was the year number four. And year number five, which is now, is gratitude and year of high five. <laughs> See, customers are just going from despair to hope to optimism to excitement to now it's the year of gratitude and they're saying, thank you, you have arrived. So a couple of things that are great, thank you for that description, is really <laughs> useful and helpful. A couple of things that are, I think, uh, conventional wisdom on HP, which are, 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 like you said, it's mixed, right? Acquisitions, some work out, some don't. The three bar acquisition has been a home run. So HP actually can do good acquisitions Absolutely. and it's proven that. The second is, not so much for HP, but large companies can't do organic development. This, what I wanted to say, I told you I was off camera, I was going to give you a hint. This is the first example of organic development inside of HP storage since the original EVA. The original yeah. EVA was a kick-ass product. I That's remember good. when we saw that late 90s, early 2000s, we said, wow, this is ahead of its time. Right. And then HP sort of squeezed the R&D investment, and that's when they got into trouble. HP didn't, do, didn't make that mistake. You poured money into R&D, put resources in there. This is true organic development run by a, you know, H, HP, you know, not by the you know, independent or you know, smaller company that you acquired. So, so that's awesome, congratulations yeah, Absolutely, on that. absolutely, thank you, thank you. No, that's a very astute observation on, uh, on what we did. So that was mm. pretty, pretty, pretty darn good observation. Yeah, so now we're here. Uh, you guys are out talking about the All Flash Data Center. Most companies aren't, well, Pure Storage will talk about the All Flash Data Center. I don't have anything else, but most large established companies aren't talking about the All Flash Data Center. They're sort of protecting the, the past a little bit from the future. They're sort yeah. of doing that balancing act. You guys don't have that strategy. You're going hard after all flash. Talk about that. Yeah, so um, so here's what, how we see from an opportunity standpoint and talking to customer standpoint is that um, uh, less than two or three percent of the customers have really made the transition from disk to flash. So we see that as a 98 or a 97 percent opportunity uh, for just lying uh, ahead of us. And that tra this transition is real because um, flash not only helps with the power saving and the acoustics and the data density, but the performance. So it's an, um, as customers go and look at the characteristics of Flash and look what the array can provide, they, we see a world in the next few years where the transformation is going to go from, maybe today, I think I'll be op optimistic by saying the most of the data center customers are probably at 2% of the Flash adoption, that 98% our architecture can get there, and that's mm -hmm. our addressable market. Uh, right now, which is a fantastic opportunity for us from a uh, revenue and a growth standpoint. Well, like, and, and you know, the question that we have in the crowd chat today is, okay, when, when is that going to happen? Um, and my feeling is it's uh, economics. Okay. You exactly know, at, right. at the point at which it crosses over, which is very close. Uh, um, so depending how you cut it, raw, not yet, but if you throw in deduplication, you're there. I'll give, um, an, I'll give an, a proof point is when, uh, how the market adopts it, right? The last two quarters, um, the three-part revenue has been say, has been growing gangbuster for us for several quarters now. Right. Uh, graining market shares and everything. In the last two quarters, we saw a very interesting trend in our install base. We sold more flash than 15k RPM drives. Mm. So on a business which is growing in this fast uh, fast clip, you see that ch change happening on your high performance drives to the flash. That will translate. That's a leading indicator on what's happening, and it's going to happen very fast. Well you, well, you know David Floyd, I, I, yeah. you, you, people go to the wiki, go to wikibond.org and you'll find this piece on there. Click the history in the wiki. In 2009, he predicted that by 2014, uh, all flash arrays would, re flash would replace high spin speed, 15K RPM. And people at the time said, 2000, but that, you're crazy. Right. He was, okay, pretty close. He Not was bad. pretty close. He's yeah. now saying that flash, forgetting uh, people cost, that flash yeah. will be less expensive than spinning disk by next year. Now, what he's saying is, the raw cost, you have to add in deduplication. Absolutely. Uh, and, and you have to factor in the fact that you need less storage to service an application That's with Flash, right. but if you do that, it's going to be cheaper. And then, his, his cherry on top is data sharing. Yep. 
because you can now make developers more productive by giving them an, a, essentially a, a live copy of data that they can test and, and right. dev on. And that's going to complete, and you can't do that with spinning disk. You have to spin off copies and then you get copy creep and that kills productivity. So what are you seeing there? I, I think he's uh, right on. He's right on on his predictions, both mm -hmm. on the timing standpoint and also the reasons for why it's going to happen very fast. I, I couldn't agree with him more. In fact, um, in fact, uh, his prediction is so right that uh, next Discover, uh, I might bring him to the uh, blackjack table with we'll me. <laughs> we'll see. I mean, you know, there's a very bold prediction now, and, and as well, in talking to some of your customers, like we had Alcoa on the other day, and they're not using dedupe. They chose not to. Right. They said, "Nah, it's fine. We're getting, we're making a lot of money off of this. We don't want to mess with it." We don't right. want to put that in, and you you can understand that there's sensitivity there. So there's a maturity thing That's as right. well. So sometimes you know we analysts tend to get get a little right. ahead of our skis, but the trend is very clear. Trend is very trend yeah. is very fast, and I think this is one of the trends which is going to accelerate very fast mm. uh, as well. So this is one of the fast moving trend, um, and um, so I think I think people will make this transition at their own pace. But there is a nine at least ninety eight percent of this uh, customers they go in and you know, nobody wants to build a data center, another data, new data center. They want to optimize what they already have or even refine better. So I think it's the, they will use more features. The flash is also getting denser. I mean, we just, we just, um, so we, well, six months ago, we were at 1.92 terabyte flash drive. Right. Today we're at 3.84 terabyte. That happened right. like in six months. So, so even without the deduplications, compressions, and everything, the density of the flash is also increasing. So you're tracking Moore's law. You're coming. The price is coming down faster than than, than spinning disk. It's perfect storm. Just a matter of time. Perfect storm of economics. All right, Milan. We have to leave it there. Thanks very much for coming on the cube. It's great to hear the story, and congratulations on the success. Really appreciate it. Thank you very much, and glad to be here. All right, Thanks. keep it right there, buddy. Jeff Frick and I will be back with our next guest. This is the cube. We're live from HP Discover 2015.